So in our last lesson, we talked about how do we get from hydrogen all the way up to iron and how this process happens through nuclear fusion inside of these supermassive stars. The supermassive stars are not going to do anything once they have the iron. They won't fuse it to make these higher level elements that you see on the table. The reason why they're not going to do that is it would actually cause the star to spend more energy to create those elements than the star would get. Now, sure, in a lab setting, we could theoretically make that happen, but naturally that doesn't happen. Uh, a good way to think of this is we can uh, create a refrigerator, and in a refrigerator what we do is we remove equilibrium, we remove balance by making this particular container cold while its surrounding environment is warm. Uh, we know that if it wasn't for our compressor and our engineering that allowed, uh, created the refrigerator, this would not naturally happen. The refrigerator would not spontaneously cool itself down while its surrounding environment is warm. Similarly, the star is not going to naturally create these higher level elements because the star isn't conscious. It doesn't supply excess energy in order to create higher level elements. What's happening though in the star, which you should have seen in the previous video, is you have two forces in balance here. We have the nuclear force uh, from the core that is trying to blow the star apart from all of the fission reactions. Then we have the gravitational force, which is trying to crush the star under its own mass. It seems like this is an incredibly unstable idea. You have an absurd amount of mass that's trying to crush this thing into a black hole, and you have these nuclear detonations that are trying to blow it apart. It seems incredibly hostile. The strange thing is this is a very well-balanced system that can last for hundreds of millions of years in the supermassive stars and billions of years in the smaller ones. So what happens when we create these higher level elements above iron is we eventually run out of nuclear fuel. So the elements within this region here that would undergo the fusion simply run out. And therefore, these red arrows, which are representing the nuclear force, get smaller and smaller and smaller, weaker and weaker and weaker, and gravity begins to win. Because the quantity of mass uh, has changed slightly. We have lost some mass. That's the point of nuclear fusion, but not dramatically in order to impact the force of gravity. So gravity is ultimately going to win. When it does, two things are going to happen. We have the core of the star, and in the core of the star, you could get a black hole. You could end up with a neutron star. A neutron star is, uh, if the star was not quite massive enough to become a black hole, it becomes a neutron star. Neutron stars happen under the immense gravity that the electrons are actually smashed into the protons and turn into a neutron. And you have a whole bunch of neutrons just densely packed on top of each other. Black hole, if it's massive enough, well, we've heard about black holes before. You've basically created so much gravity that the escape velocity of the black hole is greater than the speed of light. The other thing that happens, though, is the outer portions of the star. In these outer regions of the star, we needed energy in order to create the higher level elements. And suddenly, as the gravitational potential energy gets converted into kinetic energy as the star collapses, we suddenly have all of this extra energy that I was talking about before that the star didn't. So all of that extra energy causes these higher level elements to be made. And that takes us all the way up to uranium. In this process, we begin to actually create fusion of higher level elements. 
the result of this too is along with it's not just higher level elements that are fusing we also get the lower level elements that are fusing too and suddenly the nuclear force kicks back into overdrive and blows the outer shell of the star away the result of that is a nebula the event we call a supernova and the remains is a nebula which will take us to our next lesson